Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on what is hypervisor by IntelliPad. A hypervisor is a crucial piece of software that makes virtualization possible. It abstracts guest machines and the operating system there are none from the actual hardware. Hypervisors create a virtualization layer that separates CPU or processors, RAM and other physical resources from the virtual machines you create. In this session, you will learn all about Hypervisor and its properties. So without further wait, let's start the session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPad. In today's video, I'll be talking about Hypervisors. So let us take a look at the agenda before starting off with the video. Firstly, I'll be uh, talking about the history of hypervisors, how it all started. Next, I'll be introducing the concept of hypervisor, its definition and all the trivial stuff. Next, I'll move on to how does hypervisor work. Next, I'll be talking about the types of hypervisors. And finally, I'll be giving a list of different vendors uh, which provide hypervisors in the industry right now. Okay, now that we are clear with the agenda, let us move on with the video history. In 1965, hypervisors were developed to interact with the IBM RPQ. RPQ here stands for Request Price Quotation. So this was done on the IBM 360-65. So this was the uh, model 65. And uh, this computer was a member of the IBM System 360 family uh, back in 1965. So they were created with the intention of testing system sharing across virtual computers and investigating novel hardware concepts without affecting the primary production system. Hypervisors are increasingly used to allocate physical hardware resources to virtual machines on the host machine and uh, this uh, virtual machines are also referred to as guests. So below we have the picture of the IBM 360-65 uh, computer. So the hypervisors were initially tested on this device. Now let us move on to the introduction part. A hypervisor is a piece of hardware, software or firmware that can create virtual computers and manage them and allocate resources to them as well. Virtual machines are machines that run on the host's machine's resources. These resources can be RAM, processor, etc. To accommodate the necessary virtual machine guests, you can divide these resources as many times as you wish. Uh, you can uh, literally create n number of virtual machines on a single server or a host machine. Alright guys, this is some of the facts of uh, hypervisors. So the first fact is, a hypervisor also known as a virtual machine monitor. It is also called as a VMM. It is a software that creates and runs virtual machines. And there are two types of hypervisor. Uh, we have type 1, which is also called as bare metal hypervisors. And uh, the next type is, um, you guessed it, type 2. And uh, type 2 hypervisors are also called as uh, hosted hypervisors. And I'll be explaining why it got the name as hosted and uh, bare metal in the upcoming slides. So you'll just have to know that there are two types of hypervisors, that is type 1 and type 2. And the last fact is, uh, virtual box is widely used hypervisors so virtual box is a type of hypervisor and it is provided by oracle and it is one of the major examples of hypervisor so it belongs to type 2 hypervisors and the task of spinning up a new virtual machine is very cumbersome uh, so we need to automate this using another software like vagrant uh, the software is written in ruby that is vagrant is written in ruby language and we can create script in the, the ruby language to automate the creation of virtual machines so on top of the hypervisors we can add uh, additional software like vagrant so this basically auto automates the creation of virtual machines. Now let us move on to the next topic that is how does hypervisors work. Uh, you might have a PC with 8 GB of RAM and uh, you might be using Windows operating system. So now you could establish a virtual machine running Linux and then uh, use a hypervisor to manage its resources such as allocating 2 GB of RAM to the virtual machine. And if you wish to run programs that require Linux instead, some of the host's machine resources would be allocated to the virtual machine running the Linux instance, while some would be allocated to the original Windows operating system. And the same logic goes on for processors as well. And you can also do it for uh, storage also. Now let us move on to the types of hypervisors. There are two main types of hypervisors referred to as type 1 or bare metal and a type 2 or hosted. A type 1 hypervisor acts as a lightweight operating system and runs it directly on the host's hardware as you can see in the diagram below. While a type 2 hypervisor runs as a software layer on an operating system like other computer programs. 
So type 2 is a software and it is it does not uh, work on your uh, system's hardware. So you will be having a kernel that uh, that is where your uh, original operating system lies. That is the host operating system lies. And on top of the host operating system, you will have a hypervisor which acts as an application or a software. So within that software, you can create as many virtual machines as you like. So this is shown in brief in the diagram below. Bare metal hypervisors are typically faster and more efficient because they have direct access to the underlying hardware and do not need to go through the operating system layer. Uh, this basically says that type 1 hypervisors are uh, faster than type 2 hypervisors. And hosted hypervisors or type 2 hypervisors are significantly easier to set up and get running. So you just have to install a software and uh, you are ready to use your hypervisors. So this is uh, type 2 hypervisors are uh, new user friendly. And type 1 hypervisors require an additional step uh, or the steps are complicated to install. But once you have it set up and running, type 1 hypervisors are uh, faster than type 2 hypervisors. So it depends on the type of user uh, which one you want to go for. Now let us talk about the different vendors in the industry right now. First we have VMware uh, EXXI uh, or uh, it is also called as vSphere. VMware was the pioneer of the virtualization industry. They uh, started with the concept of virtualization and with its hypervisor being one of the leading products in the market. So in the market, uh, vSphere is the leading hypervisor right now. So next we have Microsoft's uh, Hyper-V. As a recent entrant into the virtualization market, Microsoft offerings brings the heft of one of the world's biggest security companies. So Microsoft Hyper-V is uh, made for the security companies right now. Next we have Citrix Zen Server. It is based on the open source project called as Zen. Citrix Zen Server is one of the most important hypervisors in the industry. Next we have Oracle's VirtualBox. And it goes one step further than its competitors in pursuing an open source policy. Oracle has made its VirtualBox software freely available under the GNU General Public License. So VirtualBox is free to use for uh, every user. So you can just install VirtualBox and uh, check it out. It is a type 2 hypervisor. So it acts as an application or a software. So you can download it in uh, Google right now and uh, take a look at uh, how hypervisor works. So next we have a Parallels hypervisor. Uh, parallel, uh, it is also known as uh, hypervisor for uh, Mac operating systems. It is also works on Windows, but uh, it caters to Mac operating system and it works well on uh, Mac operating systems. And it is available as a bare metal installation, which means it is a type 1 hypervisor. And lastly, we have Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. It is best known for its uh, enterprise version of Linux. Red Hat also has a virtualization offering uh, based on a kernel based virtual machine. And it is also an open source hypervisor that is uh, who it means anyone can make changes to the software and uh, the source code is open to the public. So thank you guys for watching till the end. That's all I have for today and have a nice day. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cloud and DevOps, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in cloud computing and DevOps by ENICT Academy IIT Roorkee and it is taught by IIT Roorkee professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.